Uh, yeah, so um, is the world coming to an end or is it just all in our heads and it's learned nonsense based on films that we've seen? And if you look at all the bad in the world, you'll see everything's bad. But really, if you look at all the good, there's just as much good. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Totally, totally, totally. <laughs> yeah, so t t tell, no. me, tell me, tell me uh, your opinion on um, why when you look at something too much, it becomes a reality, even though it's just not reality it's in your head because of what you've been focusing on you know actually i i think it's that's this that's the power hang on, especially over hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. oh hang sorry on, froze is it good now yeah yeah you can yeah you can continue all all right so uh regarding that i think it's actually even though it's on a minds right i think our minds are just that much powerful what we think, what we know, happens. Yeah, I really, I really think that's that's true. That's real. You know, the power of our minds. You know, we see good in other people. We see good anywhere, actually. And yeah, it, it just, you just, it turns out that way. You know what? You know what I'm saying? You know, like Absolutely. we, we, we just want to find if we want to find the good in something we see it we find it yeah basically that so i believe that there's no such thing as just like one like a person there's no such thing as a person right a person's made up of negative vibration positive vibration and therefore okay. negative cells positive cells and the biology is different in a negative person as opposed to a positive person like you've got weak immune if you're negative strong immune if you're positive so the biology is different and there's different vibrations. So it's not just like one person. Yeah, we're all human species, but we're different people when you break down the core. Um, so if we are all different, even though we're all human, um, and we're all trying to follow certain rules in life and morals and beliefs and laws, is it actually possible if you've essentially come from small tribes, lots of different small tribes all around the world? Mm -hmm. We've come together, we're all trying to follow this way of life that we see online this like just way of life but it we're not designed to all follow that belief system because we're made from different tribes and beliefs and therefore yeah yeah you know what i mean you know uh i think if we really it only if we could understand each other like more maybe if we we take take a second take a pause to maybe listen really listen to to someone i think that's i mean that's the key you know to to maybe understanding where he's coming at or how how you can really connect i don't know i don't know what what do you think what do you think personally um, well i watched his documentary that that darren brown did on netflix where he went to america and found this person that hated mexican migrants right because he lived uh -huh. by the ball and he bought into all the bullshit about um, Mexicans and build the wall and all that nonsense, right? Anyway, uh -huh, so yeah. um, he got this person and he really hated Mexicans. Didn't have a reason to hate the Mexicans, just hated them because of yeah. what he'd always believed. Anyway, cut long story short, um, he was doing hypnosis, setting up things, subliminal messaging, putting things into his mind. And they got the Mexican guy and that in American guy, and they sat in a room in silence in a chair and they just stared at each other for ages there's no talking yeah. it was just silence and they had to connect as humans and you saw that he's got a nose like me he's got two eyes he might have a family like me he's a human he's suffering he wants happiness and the american guy broke down how he hated this mexican person because he was mexican and he just saw a yeah. human being and he broke down and he just had to hug him at the end and then they took him to the border. They made him believe he was Amazing. part of this bike gang who hated Mexican migrants. And this, uh -huh. and, and um, something like they, they set up a scene where the Mexican came into the bar and he was like, hey, bro, you're not welcome here. And they took him out and they were going to shoot him. This is all set up. They're all actors, right? Uh -huh. But then the American guy ends up jumping in front of the bullet and saying, no, kill me. Don't take him. Take me. <laughs> okay. And takes the bullet for this Mexican guy who he hated. Right? Yeah, 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 but because of all these situations where they put him in a room and he connected as a human, so he went from hating the Mexicans to taking a bullet for this Mexican guy. Of course, it was a um, a vest that had a fake yeah. gun and a fake whatever. But the point is that in his mind, he hated the Mexican, and now he took a bullet for him. 
didn't think about his family, didn't care about that. He died essentially for that Mexican in that moment. And so, yeah, the key is to listen and to see and to understand and empathize and do not judge because any judge is based on a preconception of someone else prejudging. And if everyone who's judging will often always be wrong, if you get to know that person, then this, the, the key is to not judge. Like, there was yeah, a guy on Joe yeah. Rogan's, there's a guy on Joe Rogan's podcast who interviewed this white guy who used to hate black people, right? No, hang on. This black guy. No, this black guy went into um, um, the Ku Klux Klan village or somewhere in America. Uh-huh, yeah. And, um, and they were like, hey, bro, get out of here. And the black guy knew the stereotypes and wanted to keep, um, you know, like breaking down those stereotypes. So he kept just speaking to them down the bar, saying, do you want to have a drink? They started to have a conversation. And before they knew it, they were speaking like two people, like they were both white. And this guy, actually yeah. now, he yeah. now goes around the world taking people out of the clan and, and sort of reforming them. Like he's done it to like hundreds of people where he's gone into the um, clan who've hated black people. He's got to know these people and he's changed there. He's taken them out of the Ku Klux Klan group or something like that. So he's converted them because these white guys were like, I don't know why I even believed all this shit. Like he's just another human and they're friends. So now he goes around the world taking people out of the clan. He's a famous person. He's been on Joe Rogan. He's got, I don't know, books and shit. But yeah, he's converted like 200 people, whatever, or people from like these groups of clans because he actually broke the stereotype and sat down and had a drink and had a chat. And they realized this is all bollocks. He's just another person. So yeah, yeah again, exactly, break stereotypes. Exactly. You go to the core of a human and we're just, we're all the same. We just want love, food and drink. And yeah, we are. We are. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, I actually, you know, I live here here in the Philippines. I work online, actually. And and there is that tension, you know, I, I'm not going to go further, but there is that tension because like I live in the Philippines. I'm Filipino. And, you know, I, I don't know if, if that's going to what that's going to change. But I have had a lot of my clients, like we just sit and talk and, you know, just try to understand each other, you know, and it changes that, that small thing, that small thing, just talking, just understanding where he's coming from. Why, why does he think that way? Why does he think, uh, these thoughts? And, you know, after, after just, uh, a few days, maybe calling, just doing an exchange with them and it all changes, you know, you're you're right. You're you're absolutely right about that. We need to understand each other more, and that's that's what what's lacking. You know, that's what's lacking. I think I believe, and we should really start to do it more. Start to talk more. We're we're so engaged in social media and you know our technology every day that we forget to just interact. Yeah, like, like, like <clears throat> yeah. Um, so, like, you know, animals, right? You've got a field full of cows, right? And then um, you've got the sheep in the next field and the goats in this field, right? They are used yeah. to seeing cows. And so if a sheep comes uh-huh. in, they're going to feel, like, unfamiliar because they don't know that sheep because it's not part of them. It's not got a black spot. It's, it's not a cow, mm-hmm. yeah? But, of course, over time, if that sheep hangs around the cows, the cows are going to become more welcoming. And they're not yeah. going to feel threatened by that sheep. And then, and they're not necessarily going to welcome them into the pack and like start eating the same grass. But they just won't bother. They'll just like live in harmony with that yeah. person. So yeah. different countries like England, America, Philippi- Philippines, China, India, Asia, Afghan. We're all small tribes and we've grown big enough where there's a government, right? So now you've got your own beliefs, your own mm-hmm. governments, laws, and your different parts of the land, right? But these days, because everything's online and we have planes and cars and boats, yeah, everyone's yeah, yeah. migrating. We're all traveling to different parts of the world, right? So you've got Filipinos living here, Indians living here, English living there, Irish living there. Everyone's like just one big like cake, just all shoved in the middle, right? <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And what's interesting is that we are all humans at the same base, like we want love and family, food, shelter, oxygen, whatever. But we've all come from different belief systems and laws and religions going back thousands of years that it's hard for, for people from another country to suddenly fit in to that country. Like the sheep can't just expect to go on the land. Nature um, based on some notices when things are different. So... If there is, um, imagine a snake is under some leaves, right? And he's hiding away. 
you need to know that, that that's something, there's something sketchy about those leaves, like that, that rock smooth, that leaf wasn't like that, because that could mean that there's a snake there and it's going to get you. So we're used to seeing change of patterns for our own survival. Um, so if we're used to like looking for things that are familiar, then when things aren't familiar, we're going to like push them away. So you've got mm-hmm. someone from a different country um, next to you. You don't know that person. It's nothing to do with racism or anything. It's just human yeah, nature yeah. to, if you don't know that thing, to push it away. Yeah, it exactly, exactly. As opposed to say, hey, buddy, come and, come and sit down with me. You could be a terrorist. I don't know, but come and have a drink. Our natural reaction is to push something away until we know it. So that sheep will come on the land. We will say, fuck off, mate, you could be a threat. But when you realize, hey, bro, I'm just going to have some grass like you. I just want need, just need to eat and drink, yeah? And you think, yeah. all right, then we'll you eat that grass. Eventually, it gets closer and closer. And like dogs and cats, if you put them in the same family, a family household for years, they don't see it as a cat or a dog. They just see it as, as loving each other. And they start snuggling up at night somewhere. As if you see a dog yeah. and a cat in the street, ow! Like he's going to yeah, fucking attack they, it. yeah. Um, exactly. So the, the exactly. moral of the story is that um, as things are going online these days, you are getting sheep and cows and goats and ducks and pigeons and fucking giraffes all in the same field. And the yeah. same rules apply. Hey, go back to your own country, mate. Hey, you stink, whatever. Hey, you don't understand my language. Until we learn that once you get to know some something or someone and become familiar with them, they just become you and part of your life. And the only way to... Um, we're all basically becoming one big human family and the only way to become a family is to listen understand empathize exactly. like you would your own yeah. family member and that sheep will eventually come closer to the cow until it's not your sheep i'm a cow it's just you're just another living thing eating the grass help yourself <laughs> exactly man wow amazing amazing by the way uh have you been have you been to the to the philippines i, I haven't, haven't been to, i haven't been to london no, no, yeah, no, I, I know I'm, someone I'm half Singapore. My dad's from Singapore. So, uh-huh. um, you know, I've, I've got Asian in me. So I want to travel the world and stuff like Thailand, Philippines, Singapore. Been to Singapore Amazing. Before. But, um, yeah, not Philippines. I will be going someday. I need to make money first, you know, then go out there. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally, totally. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I actually, I've checked your, your podcast. Pretty good stuff, by the way. You know, I've heard you talk about the power of the mind, you know, our mind. And this actually loosely correlates to to what I you know talk about with my listeners, right? You say that whatever we think about, the universe has a way to to send back to us, you know, the the, the vibration or 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 the blessings or what what not, right? So a lot of people actually you know think up negative thoughts especially when it comes to their careers or business or, or whatever it. Hang on, I say say that last 15 yeah. seconds again because it was a it oh, was sorry. robotic yeah. all right all Not right so, oh, it's just the universe <laughs> yeah the oh. universe exactly so um well now a lot of people actually think up negative thoughts right especially when it comes to their careers or business we tend to think about how better the other guy is or how we focus on our fears, our anxieties, that things might not work. So my question is, while we can, you know, condition our minds to think otherwise or try to think positive, right? Is that as strong or is that as effective as having yourself naturally think positive? I mean, like uh, pretending or forcing yourself to think positive, is that as powerful as naturally thinking positive thoughts? What's what's your take on that? So you're saying is um is like acting like you have it all and acting like yeah. you're happy and your life is great the same as actually when your life is great. Is that what you're yeah. saying? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So um so the brain doesn't know the difference between what's real and what isn't real. And for example, I made myself believe I was gonna be a millionaire when I was twenty one. I wasn't doing anything to make it happen, right? I had this belief yeah. when I was at school. I wanted a reason to get through school because I hated it so bad. So I said, I'm going to have 100 grand by the time I'm 18. And everyone's like, don't be fucking silly. How are you going to do that? Blah, 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 blah. And I was like, fuck you. I'll show you. I'll make it a million. And then it became <laughs> yeah. a million. So uh-huh. then it was 18 to 21. I wanted to be a millionaire. Or my goal was to have a million pounds by 21. Now, I just had this belief. I didn't know how or when or what. I wasn't really doing anything. I was buying yeah. and selling furniture and phones and stuff. But it was more about the belief and it would happen somehow. And I just had to keep going. Now, as the end became apparent that 
I really wasn't doing anything that was going to make that money unless I won the lottery or some person just gave me a million quid. Yeah. I knew that re realistically, I'm not doing anything physically to make this money, but I had that enormous belief that I went in the mindset of I'm waking up on my birthday with a million quid. And I looked at my phone, my bank account, bank account was a million pounds. And I was telling everyone around me, friends and family, that I've got a million pounds coming. And they're like, what? How the fuck? What do you mean you got a million pounds? Like, you're crazy. The point was that I didn't care what anyone said. I knew I wasn't mm -hmm. really doing anything. I just had to pray that somehow a million pounds would end up in my bank account by mistake or a lottery or I don't know how. But I had that belief. Mm -hmm. so had it for so long for three years that it was almost my birthday and it was like holy shit i'm gonna be a millionaire i convinced myself i was living that feeling i even cried the fact that i had a million quid i went through the motion oh, of wow. acting out something as if it's happened like i want to have my own talk show so i vision my talk show and this is like very similar yeah, to doing a yeah. talk show interview Whatever. I'll take over one of those platforms, don't know who, could be Fallon, could be Kimmel, I don't know, but I'll have a talk show. So it's all about the vision <laughs> until it manifests. And if it feels like it's happened, it's no different. So I visioned this million pounds in my bank account and I felt like I had a million quid. But I woke up, there was no million pounds in my bank account. So yeah, the point yeah. is that, how would I feel if I actually had the million versus how did I feel when I believed I had the million? The answer is no different. What is hard though, is if you haven't got it's perfect life and a body that's got no disease and you're struggling with cancer or whatever, it is hard yeah. to suddenly envision yourself free and happy and cancer free. It's very difficult because you're essentially asking yourself to lie to yourself when everyone's saying, doctors, whatever, you can't do this, this is impossible, yeah. you've got 30 yeah. days to live or whatever. It's very hard to go against what every single fucking person is saying. So it comes down to your own belief and whether or not you can get yourself to that mindset. Now I know, for example, repeating the same thing over and over and over and over again, really does go up in frequency in time like the stock market. If you keep saying the same things to yourself and believe in this certain thing, your body starts to believe it a little bit more each day and you keep going up yeah. in energy and belief and mindset and feeling. And before you know it, you're like, fucking hell, I could actually make it. Like you suddenly start <laughs> to get that feeling and then you get like these shivers of, fuck me, I could actually make it. And then you go up and up and up. And so once you get past that, you know, I call negative, negative the positive barrier where it's all a lie what you're saying but if you can make yourself believe that just much over the edge into like the positive part you'll feel like this could actually happen even though it probably won't yeah. so it's hard to get there but once you get there it's no different to feeling like you've already got it does that answer the question yeah yeah perfectly man amazing i i actually haven't thought of that that way and yeah so it is it is really similar huh when you really think make yourself believe but what about all right uh another question what about those who you know who try to apply it you know they really believe it they really put it in like really stick it in their their brains that yeah i'm gonna make it but you know they they fail well that's what, what, what can you say yeah what can you say to to that kind of situation yeah you can't just have the skill and ability like for example you can't just act you can't just sing and expect to become a hollywood actor or become uh -huh. a record yeah. artist yeah it's it's much more than just what you see it's the business side it's the selling side it's getting up at 6 a.m it's signing billions of cards so they can oh, get yeah. out to yeah, fans yeah. it's it's so much more it's interviewing it's being able to speak being able to listen to the person who's interviewing you being able to have fun it's so much more than what you see and um when people say you can achieve anything, it is limited. Like you can't pretty much create anything as long as someone else has already done it. That is absolutely true. Like uh -huh, yeah, anyone can yeah. be like the next Hollywood actor. If you follow the patterns and you have the skill and you have the abilities, you know the right people, you can get there if another human has got there. But something like it's anything's, anything's possible. Can you just suddenly start to fly? Well, as of this moment in time, <laughs> Yeah. No, right? But for example, over time, yeah. can humans find a way to create a, um, a jetpack? Then yes, you can fly. Yeah. So there's mm -hmm. a limit to what's possible and what isn't. It's just like more what's realistic based on your tools and circumstances now. Um, can people make it? So if you keep going, okay, then often you will make it because the ones who make it, the ones who keep going and the others drop out. It's like if you've got a race, there's like 20 people in the race, yeah? If the finish line is here and you're halfway through, but everyone else drops out, by default, you've already won 
even though you're halfway through the race and you haven't yet crossed the finish line because you're the only one left in the race. You're the winner. So sometimes you don't have to keep going all the way in order to get there because you just have to keep going. And when someone else drops out, you're left. But people give up. So they can all have skills. They can all lap. They can all sing. But it's the one who keeps going when it actually matters the most, like Mo Farah. You think that he's like just... He's just behind, but that's the that's plan. That's how he gets it all the time. He stays behind, and then all of a sudden, at the last minute, he catches up. Yeah. He, uh, um, so it's about being able to flow in water. Like, nothing stays the same. You go down one, you're going to have to go down another path. So you can't just go there. Keep going there. Learn that when you set a, sign of, set a goal and you go down a certain path, you're going to have to divert a little bit to go left and keep going, then go right and then keep going. It's not just people need to divert and come back. Mm-hmm. One step back, two steps forward is the motion that it's likely going to be. It's not just always going to be like this snowball momentum. It's always one step back, two steps forward because that is just the way it is. And if you keep going back and then forward again, you will end up getting there. It takes a while, but with anything... It often works out if a human being has already done it because they just, you just have to find the same system and the same pattern. It's just, it takes a long time and you just got to, you know, keep going. Yeah, like just do the work. Just do the work. Yeah, amazing, amazing. Uh, yeah, w- what about you? I mean, do you have any questions? Um, um, so, do you believe that everything is eventually going to be? online where there's going to be no like physical shops mm. and yet people's jobs will be simply service to others so delivering stuff or going to tesco's to go into the supermarket to get your thing or going to mcdonald's is it going to be like everything's online run by corporations or small people but then the jobs will be simply just like trade moving serving picking up collecting well that's that's certainly what what's happening right now But uh, it's it's kind of a mix for me, you know. There are, I think, I believe there are going to be some some services, some businesses, or some some things that can't be. What do you call this? It can't be. You can't do it online. You know, there are some limitations. I think when when it comes to online businesses in general. So everything online, it's, it's certainly a, a daunting idea. It, it sounds amazing, especially because that's, that's, I'm in that industry working online. But yeah, I, I think there are some, some things that you just can't transition from physical store or physical business to an online business. Like, uh, for example, well, I can't think of an example like at the top of my head, actually, you know, food, food. Well, we, you can deliver, you can, uh, you can have someone deliver food online, but I mean, you can't, you can't cook online, definitely. So it's, it's still, I think there's still the, that kind of business where it has to be physical. Yeah, that, that's, that's basically what I That's what I think. That's what I think. Do you think someone yeah. having a hair transplant is actually running away from an underlying issue of insecurity? Um, so if we all love ourselves and we know that we're all going to go grey, we're all going to lose our hair, our balls are going to start to sag. <laughs> is Should we like just love ourselves and not like have a hair transplant at 50 because you're the only guy in the office who's got a bald patch? Like Just because you have hair, does it really solve the issue of making you feel good when you know it's a wig and no one else knows it's a wig, for example. Uh, you like lying to yourself or is it best just to embrace it? What do you reckon? No, I think, I think for me, I think you should, you should really love, love yourself, love what you look like, love how, how you talk, how you look, how you, what, what, what's given to you. You know, I mean, all that, all that stuff, all that transplants. For me, I think it's, it's just gonna, In the long run, it's gonna really just destroy your, destroy yourself, destroy your body, because you know you're you're putting all these chemicals in you. And I mean, I I'm not I'm not a chemist, I'm not a scientist or anything, but that much I know that these are chemicals. They're man-made. 
we we don't have that in our bodies. And I, I mean, if you inject those inside you, I mean, who knows what's going to happen, right? Yeah, like I try to eat as natural as possible because as, 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 if man hasn't interfered with it, it means that it's better for you. So yeah. natural yeah. stuff like olives, you know, dark not dark chocolate is, is kind of man-made, but, you know, like olives oh, yeah. and walnuts and uh, Brazil nuts, um, salmon, stuff that is as natural as possible without man interfering is obviously great for you because that's what animals eat anyway, just like natural foods. Yeah. Things yeah, like exactly. stuff in the supermarket instantly you've got added stuff it's processed so it's already broken down so your body doesn't break it down the same so it doesn't give you the same effect it's got like a shelf date which means it's got preservatives and so all this stuff is purely for profit it's not good for your body if we weren't born with it it shouldn't be in our yeah. body like for example even <laughs> yeah. vitamin c i take vitamin c because i understand that man only stopped creating vitamin c in our bodies because we had enough from food, for example, right? But mm -hmm. now we've evolved from not eating bananas yeah, yeah, and yeah. fucking strawberries and berries like we used to. Now we're eating KFC and, and fucking kebab and McDonald's and that doesn't have vitamin <laughs> yeah. C in. So now we're not getting the vitamin C we should have done. So we need to be taking that because it's because of man that we're not getting it. So in that case, I do believe that we should take vitamin C, which I do. But even then, if I wasn't born with it, I don't believe that our body needs it because if it did, it would naturally find a way to create it. So it's not like a life or death situation. It does have an effect. Like my nails become really good. My hair becomes good. Uh, my skin feels good when I take it. But I'm not going to die if I don't. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Chinese medicine, for example, that's still kind of man-made, even though it's made of natural stuff, you know? Um, again, I don't believe we pretty much need... 99% of all the stuff that we put in ourselves, whether it's creams, food, shampoos, our bodies can all do it. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> I mean, what what is your take? What is your take about that? I mean, are you are you veg vegetarian or? No, no, so I, I live on a ketogenic diet, so... Oh, you know ah, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, so it's, I, I've, it's, read, it, I've read of that. Specific pure foods, mainly fats, high, high foods in fat. So macadamia, salmon, walnuts, Brazil nuts, foods that are high in fat, so your body uses um, ketones as the energy rather than glucose from sugar and shit. Mm -hmm. um, and I do have the same consistent energy all day. What types of foods do you eat in your country? Is it like... Is it like you personally vegetable stuff or like fried stuff or fats meats fish uh more on me personally i i i'm personally on more meats but you know i try to i try to really balance it up veggies on the weekends or maybe like only meats on the weekends something like that I don't I don't exactly watch watch what I eat too much, watch my diet too much, but yeah, I try to mix it up as much as I can, you know, but the constant is I I usually get my food from we usually get our food from this de uh this deli that serves really uh natural natural meats, natural vegetables from straight from the farm. And yeah, we we prefer that. Nothing like uh, the, uh, like a supermarket stuff. We we try to avoid that as much see, as possible. I, yeah. See, I'd love that being able to grow like all the veg in my garden if I'd land big enough. And I can go oh to wow! The garden if, I, if I had, and yeah. Just pick it up. Like if I want a uh, pepper <laughs> pepper and onion soup, I just grab some peppers, grab some onions. If I want some carrots or for whatever, just grab some carrots. Like there's something fundamentally that's a stupid big word I didn't need to use unnecessarily <laughs> there's something amazing about yeah. when you um like just go and get your own food and then you cook it like going to the supermarket yeah, it's yeah. not the same it's like you feel like you're being used or controlled the fact that that supermarket needs you need that supermarket and you feel obliged to pay that 30p for a carrot like you could just grow carrots in your garden for free like oh yeah there's something yeah. amazing about growing it yourself and then cooking and then like that process of like your own independence is something that people are losing we're dependent on everything for everything like 
oh, yeah. information, phones, yeah. food, water, even like fucking finding a girlfriend. You've got going dating apps now, yeah? Everything is just like so fake. Nothing's organic anymore, like bloody carrots <laughs> in the ground. Nothing's organic. Yeah. It's all <laughs> pesticides on it. And like, you know what I mean? It's really sad where everything's just becoming lost. All the basic, amazing stuff that people want and need and had and always will have. It's just not there. It is there, but it's not there, you know? Yeah, yeah, I think I think I think I get that. I think I get that. Do you believe in do you believe in um in reincarnation? Reincarnation. Oh man, that's <laughs> Well, I, I want to as much as, yeah, it's, it's not, it's not in our, it's not in our religion actually, but the concept itself is interesting for me. Like, uh, do you mean like reincarnation in general? Like you become, uh, another, you have a next life or maybe like you've been good this life and you become, you turn to a, in a human or if you've, you've been bad, you become a, a dog or a, a cat or something like that. So what do you mean a by, um, <laughs> no, so you, you come back as like another living yeah. thing, whether it's a cow or okay, a pigeon okay. or whatever, just you come back as another living physical living body. Well, I'm not sure. I'd like to believe it, but you know, if if that were true, uh, let me ask you, if that were true, why would we have, like, uh, way back we had, what, 5 billion people in the world, but now, today, we have 7 billion, moving on 8 billion people. If it was, like, a reincarnation, shouldn't it be, like, 5 billion is the, you know, you die, you reincarnate, so it's, like, a 5 billion thing, so a constant, if it were that that's very interesting because um what yeah. you just said if let's say the population is well no obviously yes yeah, so what, what i was saying what i was thinking when you said that is the more <clears throat> people on the planet the more people that reincarnate so there'll be more people the next life so we've gone from five billion yeah, really exactly. quickly to eight billion so let's just say three billion have died over the last whatever 50 50 years right they've become the extra three billion to make eight billion right so, yeah, it could make sense that the reason why we're growing in population so quick is because we're there's loads of us. We're dying quickly because of lifestyle and then we're yeah, reincarnating. Yeah. And that's why there's eight billion of us. But then that's like saying that. It kind of doesn't make sense, really, does it? It, it yeah. does make sense, the theory, like <laughs> yeah. you have one thing and it creates more. But um, the thing that all the three billion people that have died are now the extra between five and eight yeah. billion now. Um, I can't really, I haven't really thought about that deep enough, but um, yeah, we, we, you tune into energies of past spirits, whether they're alive or dead. So you become reincarnated in terms of you tune into that person's thoughts and energy, but you're not reincarnated as that person. That person isn't in that new body. You're, that new body is tuning into the thoughts and the personality traits of that person who used to be alive, who um, was, was the frequency you are at now. So you become the past energies, but that new that person who died isn't then gonna be a new body in the future. That's what I've worked out. Yeah, well, I mean that was really trippy. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean that was really like, way, way off anyway. So I have a, I, I think I have a few more questions here also. How do you get out of a slump? Like uh, personally, you built this amazing uh, collection of interviews with a lot of people already. How do you keep on coming up with the ideas, the the talks with with other people? Uh, well, I, I, don't, I don't plan what I'm going to talk about. I just I just sit down and talk. <laughs> I don't and know talk, the names, yeah, okay, I don't know where okay. they live. I can give a shit about their job. I don't care. I just want a conversation. So I don't know what we're going to speak about. I don't, I don't know anything. I just sit down and you're a human like you would in a pub. If you were in a club yeah. or a bar, a bus station, you wouldn't, you wouldn't say, hey, if you're going to go to the bus station, this is what we're going to speak about. Yeah. That's not how it <laughs> oh, works. Oh, oh, all right. You just sit Good down point. to someone in the bar and you speak and it could be for an hour or four hours. You could go back and fuck them afterwards or go play football with them the next day. You don't know 
what you're going to speak about. So why do I need to plan topics about what we're going to speak about? You're no different to a human I've met down the bar, apart from you're, you're bloody miles away. It doesn't make any difference. Yeah, yeah. So conversation will flow if you allow it. And silence doesn't have to be filled with bullshit. Just be silent. Like, let something relevant and important come to your mind. Don't fill it with, so what do you reckon, birds or ducks? Like, just bollocks. Like, <laughs> yeah, oh, shut oh, up. Right. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, why do you prefer Friends or The Big Bang Theory? Fuck off. That's nonsense. I don't watch TV. You know what I mean? Um, how do I, so what was your question? How do I get out of the slum? How do yeah, I keep evolving? Yes. Um, exactly, I believe just exactly. staying true to who you are. Keep serving, giving value to people, like knowledge. Um, listen, allow people to be heard so they can evolve. Because when you speak, you learn and you evolve. The more you speak, the more you raise your energy because you activate different parts of the brain and you learn things you didn't know and you speak about things you didn't know before. And then you start thinking about things that they've said, which makes you think about other staff, which connects to other staff and you become more aware. Wow. And then you take that knowledge for the next interview. Um, and then you literally, every time you speak to someone, you take something and then you bring it to the next one and then you share it with them. And then they share it back with you. And you sort of keep going up where you take a bit of everything. Like you're going down the market. You've got a basket. You take a few carrots, a bit of broccoli, a bit of potato, a bit of bananas, bits of yeah, fish. Yeah, yeah. And you just keep walking and taking a bit of everything in your basket. And then at the end of the day, you've got a basket full of everything. And then you take that basket. You go to the next village and you trade. Now, they only trade with meats and, uh, and nuts. And you've got fish and veg. So now you trade with their nuts with your fish and your veg. So now you've got like a mixture of more stuff. And then you take that basket full of nuts, fish, meat and veg to the next village and they've got tarantulas and snakes and shit. So you keep like going and moving, taking up, taking other people's knowledge. And then eventually you will have so much knowledge through sharing knowledge and absorbing yeah. knowledge that your platform of listeners will increase because now rather than them having to go through each village you went through, to get their fish and their nuts and their meat and their fish, whatever, they can come to you and you've already got all the fish and the meat and the nuts and the veg. So you can supply everything immediately so they don't have to then do it, which is the same as Amazon Prime getting oh, yeah, a warehouse yeah, and everyone yeah, yeah. putting all their shit in the warehouse and they deliver it rather than you go into every shop trying to find this and find that. Amazon's like, we've already got it, bro. Like, come yeah. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> amazing amazing i'm definitely gonna gonna do that i mean uh by nature i'm i'm an introvert you know i don't really speak with people different people and i actually started this podcast i, I this this like my episode number two actually you know so i actually started this podcast to really get out there you know really evolve like you said keep evolving keep talking keep interviewing different people learn more and yeah that's that's amazing that's that's some amazing input man what i will say on that topic yeah. is <clears throat> silent doesn't silence doesn't have to be filled with bollocks right put that quote on your wall silence doesn't have to be <laughs> i will i will with bollocks right <laughs> just be silent embrace that moment you don't have to feel awkward. You're only feeling awkward because you think they're feeling awkward. They're only feeling awkward because they think you're feeling awkward. So don't feel awkward. Just embrace that situation. There's nothing to say. Laugh. Like, just go. Because <laughs> you both know that. What, what do we see now? But that, this, that's okay. It doesn't have to keep talking for hours. Like, just something will just come into your mind. Like, you'll just look around and be like, hey, have you tried that new beer over there? No, what beer is that? Yeah, it's a, uh, excuse me, what beer is that? And now you're speaking about and, beer. Yeah, like, yeah. naturally, stuff will just happen. But I used to be um, an introvert, meaning I used to be... I didn't used to speak to people. I used to be in my head all the time. I was always confident mm -hmm. within, but I never had the ability or the balls to speak to girls, speak to people. I didn't have that ability. So the more I didn't do that, the more I went into my head, and it became dangerous where you start speaking to the voice in your head as opposed to people, okay? Because you get the same information and result. You hear that voice, you start to imagine and believe or interpret what they would say if you ask them. So rather than asking them, you go into your head and you think, what would they say? So you get the answer, but it's not necessarily what they would say. It's like yeah, kind of predicting yeah. what they would say, like kind of general advice. So you end up not asking and speaking to anyone. So the minute I started to speak to girls, speak to people, dance around people, the minute my energy increased, 
and my confidence increased and I felt alive because I'd reached another feeling of energy like I'd fe- reached another level of confidence like a boost of serotonin and dopamine and all the fucking endorphins that you get when you take when you when you g- confront a fear and then yeah. you end up making it it's like skydiving you're fucking shitting yourself on that plane but you jump out euphoria so you spoke to that girl and you think oh she's not going to give me a number and then she gives you a number you think wow that's amazing and then you think wow Imagine how many other girls' numbers I can get. And then you go and speak to other girls and you realise, if I'm getting all these girls' numbers and I couldn't get them in the past, what was different? And the difference was you didn't have the balls to speak to them. And actually, Mm -hmm. everyone is as insecure as the other person. Girls don't go up to guys because they haven't got the confidence too. It's not guys aren't coming up to girls because they haven't got the confidence. Yes, stereotypically, the guy comes up to the girl. But... That's that's not that's nonsense. We're all just kind of we don't want to get rejected, so we wait for that person to come to us. So if we go to them, we won't feel rejection because yeah, we went up to yeah, them. Yeah. So yeah, I confront this feeling by facing fears and speaking to people. The more I spoke to people, the more confident I became. And the more confident you become, the better you feel. And the more you better you feel, the more you speak. And the more you speak, the better you feel. It becomes yeah. this massive snowball effect. But the ball is already really big. Like you've done the hard work of pushing that snowball up that hill to get the snow. You've already spoken to lots of people. Now you've got to maintain that snowball and just keep speaking. So for you, just keep speaking to as many people as possible. And the more you speak, the more confident you'll feel. And you'll just become, you'll become God. As in you'll just become this enormous, powerful being that you can do anything. Because everything is everything is just human connection anyway somewhere along the line and speaking and communicating and if you master that you can take it anywhere you want anywhere in the world amazing you amazing can negotiate stuff, man. Amazing you can negotiate stuff. negotiate with like how much you pay for food when you can speak you can get any girl or any guy you can get any job because you can negotiate with your boss it all comes down to communication and confidence if you're a confident speaker People will see strength and they will realize they have to negotiate with you. If they see weakness and vulnerability and shyness, they will take that and they will take advantage of it. And they won't give you the better price. They won't give you the job. So just keep speaking and overpower people's mind by confidence in a good way. Amazing stuff, man. Amazing stuff. I'm really learning a lot here. So, yeah, it's amazing. (laughs) Good. Yeah. Wow. 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 Remember, you don't have to speak. Just reflect on what I've said. Take it in and talk yeah, when it feels I'm, I'm right. Actually, don't have to fill it yeah. with bollocks. <laughs> That's actually what I'm. You know, it's it's so refreshing. You know, to to be able to speak, to be able to talk, because I stay at home so much. I don't get to speak to other people. That being able to talk, especially like this kind of thing productive stuff learning different ideas yeah it's it's refreshing to me you know That's so the thing. most thanks, most thanks. things our brain and our our mind is focused on stuff not necessarily in the library in the school in the university in the newspaper with our friends our minds are focused online And online is an unlimited source of knowledge and information and ideas. So if you're if you're focusing on stuff on YouTube and online about all this amazing stuff around the world, okay, you can't just go down the pub and speak to your friends about all this stuff unless they've also Mm -hmm. been looking at this stuff online. Most people in your local tribe will just know the local stuff in the village, the local gossip, just small minded shit. So if you've been looking at stuff online about all this stuff around the world, you need to get those thoughts out, communicate. And the only way you can communicate is finding people online who've also been doing the same. So you have no choice but to find people online and speak to them about the stuff that you've been focusing on during the day. Because otherwise, you're going to drive yourself crazy going over all this shit in your head by yourself, to yourself. Because no one else around you has been focusing on all this stuff online around the world. So you have to find these people, have these chats online. Because you're just going to become autistic, meaning you're just going to go inside your head and start speaking to yourself like I used to do. Which the shit that you are, speak and connect. And it's the same as speaking to your mate down the pub. It's not, 
I can't physically touch you because you don't touch your friends anyway unless you're fucking them afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> you just speak and open your mouth. So the brain doesn't know the difference between what's real and what isn't real, meaning this conversation is no different to me speaking to my friend down the pub about dog biscuits. I'm getting out my voice. My brain's activating. I'm learning. And the, it's, <clears throat> the same, it's the same difference. It's just I just can't touch you, you know? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> it's just amazing it's just amazing this is actually my first interview so yeah it's more more uh yeah you've definitely been thrown right in the deep end here <laughs> yeah oh yeah definitely man definitely it, it's down from here <laughs> yeah yeah so i'm 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 Where'd really you... yeah sorry no, I was just going to fill the time with bollocks. I was going to say, where do you plan to take this? <laughs> well, actually, yeah, it was actually the 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 law of attraction thing. Really, it really uh, spoke to me when I, I was watching some of your episodes. You know, because I watched this in the past. You know, I watched this movie. It was like a a documentary or a movie. The secret. The secret. Yeah. yeah, that one, that one, and it, yeah, it reminded me when when you were talking to your uh, to the others about the strength, the power of your mind. It really, wow, okay, this this is a secret. So it reminded me of that, and you know, I want I I started formulating, you know, what what am I gonna ask? How, how am I gonna you know ask him about this stuff? And maybe I should add this, maybe or this or this. And yeah, I'm. You actually answered answered even more than that. You, you gave more than when what I I asked already. So yeah, that, that's me. That's me. Um, yeah. So like <clears throat> the en- like the secret is basically just the energy and the power of the mind. And but mm-hmm. everyone's or uh, people have always known this. Like go back thousands of years, they've always known this. Like that's how they used to move rocks and like Stonehenge and pyramids and yeah, stuff. Yeah. Shit energy you create enough energy vibration and find the frequency of that rock and it will start to become in harmony and start to move and that rock will start to just move and then you can move it like that it makes sense as a theory but you think how the fuck can you use your mind to move a rock <laughs> like it's become lost in life like humans have lost what we've always known and it's always been there and you know um <clears throat> back in the day one out of say six people in the tribe would know it and then eventually they'd all be they'd all share the same knowledge whereas now it's like there's eight billion of us uh, yeah like one one out of six is the same as i don't know one sixth of eight billion so i don't know a billion right um so a billion should know that as out of eight billion but obviously a billion doesn't know the secret out of eight billion yeah um because what well, the, the population is growing so quick and evolving so quick that we've not got time to sort of think okay what were we doing yesterday yeah. And so now yeah. you're just left with like a few humans on the planet, like people who know the secret properly, like actually understand the law of attraction properly. You must be talking like under a million, like it can't be much more. Like think about how many countries there are, how many people know it in that country it has to be under a million. So you look at it like that. That's like 0. I don't know, one percent of the whole population. I don't know. Didn't, didn't pass maths. But yeah. it's, it's something crazy. <laughs> but once you master it, you realize everything is that you see in everything. Like you just see it. You see it through your law of attraction eyes. As I see, as I say, it. you see everything like through spirits and vibration, as opposed to that person, like nothing's a person. Mm-hmm. It's all to do with like energy, which is energy, created that person. Yeah. Um, you become a superpower. Like uh, you can read anyone. You, I mean, I might be speaking for myself, but you can read anyone and you just see people's pain and you understand and you empathize and, you don't get angry at that person because you know they're dealing with shit and it, you just have this superpower like everyone in the past obviously i can't speak for everyone but a lot yeah. of people in the past they've always known this small tribe probably know this you know you know the amazon rainforest right now they probably will know this because you know they've only had like 50 people in one tribe at once and it's just passed down from the generation before you don't read what's your take on our general uh, i'm i'm not- on the generation right now? Um, 
<clears throat> like anything, there's good and bad, positive and negative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think there's more negative than positive, and that's only because there's um, uh, if there's more negative people than positive people, as a population grows, when they when those negative people breed and have kids, they're going to be negative too. So now every uh-huh. one negative person creates now two more negative people. So imagine the population is increased by say three billion, and they and half of them were negative, one point five billion, and they all have kids. Now you've got one point five times one point times three. So now you've got four point five billion negative people out, out of yeah. You know what I mean? So there's more negative the, people. Yeah. Um, you share the biology and the vibration to your kid. If you're a negative person and you've got a baby, that person's going that baby is gonna be vibrating on your negative frequency. As soon as they pop out your vagina, then they're gonna be negative and attract to negative people, negative things, focusing on the negative, and then, then they're gonna get disease because it's all based in if you're in a negative vibration, disease is more likely to happen because your body's not at ease. Mm-hmm. So it's a disease. So yeah, that's why there's so much negative bollocks everywhere. And you always attract the same. So that cow will attract another cow. Negative people and attract it just, negative it just people. Spreads from there. It just yeah. it's like coronavirus. It just keeps yeah. spreading. <laughs> and the only way you can cure it is to stay away from it. Like you can't cure the coronavirus. You've just got to let it do it what it's gonna do. It's got to let negative people do what they're gonna do, because you can't cure thing you have to let like forget man-made jabs and shit you can't cure it you can only stay away from the thing you don't want in your life and um, you only have yourself to blame if you put yourself in a place where there's the virus like what do you expect you can only blame yourself if a negative person is uh, saying you can't do something or you're useless or you're whatever you're an idiot uh, yeah. what do you expect yeah. they're negative they're not happy it's not people's fault people all want to be in this positive energy but negative people it's hard to get out of that pattern because they're around negative people. They're sucked in. You know, that cow is always going to migrate back to the fill full of cows, even if it spends a bit of time with sheep and the sheep has nicer grass. He's not going to fit in. He's going to revert back to that fill full of cows, even though he knows that this grass is nice and greener. It's tricky. Yeah. Um, all I can say is that you just have to focus on yourself and your small tribe around you. So the people that you can control and influence and they, the people who are there, basically, people that matter, people that mean something like forget online, forget the news. Yeah, we podcast online, but focus on the positive people. Don't focus on negative energy, whether it's comments or whatever. Just focus on positive connections. Focus on the people around you who are there physically. Forget anything else. Take away phones and TV. You're just left with your five mates down the pub. That's all that matters. Look after those people. That's all that matters. That's all that really exists. You can be on social media, but just forget the negative. Because as I said, in reality, there's negative people. You wouldn't be with them. So on social media, there's going to be negative people. 70% are going to be negative and 30% are going to be positive because there's more negatives and positives. But again, avoid them. Don't respond. Don't block everyone. You're going to be there forever. It's like cancer. (laughs) It's just going to keep spreading. Like, just stay away. Yeah. Just... Use your brain to focus on the positives rather than the negatives. Or don't look at the comments. Just use it to post your new podcast and then come off it. Like log out. Use it as a way to promote your business as opposed to your personal life of enjoyment. Post it. Log out. That's it. What you don't know know can't harm you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. True. True. Wow, so much, so much amazing stuff, man. So much amazing stuff. Thanks, thanks. Just the podcast isn't over yet. Like, you know, I've got for as long as oh, we, yeah, yeah, we of get course, bored. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no problem there. I cleared my sked. I cleared my sked. <laughs> you what, the whole day? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I usually write, uh, I'm on my, on my weekends, I usually try to, write songs sing write but yeah that's that's one of the things why i mentioned how how do you get out of a slump because yeah it's been it's been going slow you know the the music writing so again <clears throat> as hard as it will be to hear this <clears throat> i'd say it to anyone right You've got yeah, to look yeah, at it, yeah, of object, I don't know the difference between objective and subjective. What I know is that one's looking in and one's looking out from within. Anyway, uh-huh. again, people say, don't give up on your dreams. Anything's possible. Correct, right? But, for example, 
if you are looking, if, if somebody's looking for a plumber and you're and you are a uh, electrician, you can't fix the pipe. OK, yeah. means that yeah. you're not suitable for the job. There are so many people who want to sing, want to act, want to be in a band, want to start their own clothing brand. Right. And the reality is, yeah, if you keep going, the chances are you will make it. OK, but you've got to assess your own self from a business point of view. You want to become a, an artist, a singer, get a record deal, whatever. OK, great. You like music. It's your passion. You like to sing. It's not about whether you can sing, whether you can write. It's in order to get to the next step, someone has to invest in you like a product. And as a business, you would only invest money in something that's going to sell. If someone's not confident, but they can play guitar in their room, that's not going to sell and make records. Yeah. Uh -huh. So look at yourself objectively. Can I sing? Yes. Am I good looking? Yes. Am I confident? Maybe, maybe not. Can I sell records? Maybe, maybe not. Am I willing to get up at six in the morning? Maybe, maybe not. Am I willing to yeah. am I willing to speak to random people and put on a fake happy smile? Hi, nice to meet you. Just to get their record, like just to buy the record. It's so much more than that. And look at it from a business point of view. If you're going to invest in a product like a can of beans or a pack of crisps, um, it's not just do they taste nice because you've got to sell them and there's so much more involved. So look at yourself from a product. And if you are an investor, would you invest in yourself? Are you going to sell records? Mm. How do you compare to other bands in your neighborhood, let alone around the world? And that's why so many do not make it because <clears throat> they have like, they can sing and they can act and they can dance. But in order to get to the next stage, you need to be a business. You sit down with the record label. They say, look, I'll give you a hundred grand. We'll invest this in you. You need to sell a hundred grand's worth of records. And that's where it's like, shit, do I really want to make it? I didn't realize that. I didn't realize. I just wanted to sing on stage in front of fans and crowds. And it's like, yeah, that's great. But how are you going to get there? There's a process. And yeah, you can spend your life going around small gigs, building a little yeah, following. Yeah, 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 By the yeah. time you get enough people to actually make a living off it, those followers are now like 30 years old, like because you've taken 30 years to get there. And those 30 year olds aren't interested in like, you know, the music you're writing about now because you've evolved too. So you're not singing about stuff that was relevant to why they were listening to you 30 years ago. So now it's like I'm now trying to sell a bloody iPhone 5 when everyone's buying iPhone X. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so a harsh reality is unless you you know you have all the key elements and ingredients to get there there's really no point oh, wasting yeah, any more yeah, time okay. like for example a lot of people they enjoy music as a passion and they love to sing right but then it's something right, completely right. different doing it for your career because it comes about business as opposed to passion right <clears throat> so again you can always sing, <clears throat> you can always get small gigs, you can always, you know, make a little living off it or just sing for free. But if your dream is to be this big artist, whatever, you need to look at yourself from a business point of view. Are you going to make the record label money? Are you going to make them 100 grand in order for them to invest in you? OK, do you have all the key ingredients that the record label would need you to have? Ask yourself that honestly. Forget the passion. Forget <laughs> I have a dream. Oh, yeah, yeah, forget yeah, yeah. anything's possible. My father told me that. Yes, that, that, that is true. But there's no point trying to push a rock that you cannot push. OK, find a rock you can push. Right. And then it's oh, like shit. Oh, man. Yes, I do <laughs> want to be a singer. But the reality is, am I going to make it in a flooded crowd? Reality is, I don't know whether you can sing or not, but statistically, 95% of people that want something, whether it's singing or making a business, they fail. I'm no different. I have failed so many fucking times. I'm no different. Okay. The only difference was, is I looked at myself from a, a third perspective. Am I likely to get what I want down this path? Am I likely to be an actor? Because I want to act. Maybe if I'm a big name like Kevin Hart, I can sell movies. <laughs> yeah. Put me in a stand-up film, I can sell it. But am I an actor? No. Can I learn lines? No. Have I acted before? No. Do I really want to be, be told what to do by the director? I've got to act a certain way, like, you know, method acting. Mm -hmm, no. Mm -hmm. But Kevin Hart, he can just be him funny self. So it's not really acting, right? Yeah. 95% so, um, of people fail, and it's when they realize that. Now, I've realized for me, you can't tell me that it was going to fail. Even though I knew it might fail, 
I have to go down that path and feel the pain. I have to go down that path to experience and acknowledge and know myself that, yes, you said I would fail, but I have to feel that feeling of shit myself. And unfortunately, I have also learned that people have to experience, they, they have to freeze themselves. They have to freeze their bollocks off, okay, in order mm -hmm. to remember to bring a jacket next time. You've got to yeah. get wet in order to remember to bring your brolly, okay? You may know deep down it's going to rain, that it's going to be cold, that you're not going to be a singer. You may know that, okay? But you have to go down that path. You've got to freeze so you know now I need to bring a jacket or I'm not going to make it. And then you realize I need to go down another path. And so essentially it's catch 22 because if uh -huh. deep down you know you're not going to make it, why waste your time? You're still going to go down that path like me, like anyone. I suppose the difference is, is that when someone says <clears throat> the, the likely outcome that you are finding reasons to confirm that person was right as opposed to trying to find reasons that I still am good enough, I still am going to make it. Because these people that spend their whole life still hoping and wishing and never give up on your dreams and someone's going to find me, that's dangerous. Whereas, for example, I would say this now. Now you go down paths, people say, look, buddy, you're, you're too small or you're, you can't do this, you can't do that. And you're like, okay, well, unless I can overcome that height or overcome that confidence, now there's a chance. But it's like, well, I can't do that. I can't overcome that. I can't grow. I can't sing any better. Maybe he was right. And now you start finding reasons to confirm, actually, maybe this is the end of this path. I need to go down another path. Whereas if people don't hear the harsh reality that 95% fail, it's fuck off. I'm going to make it. I believe in God. <laughs> Nothing's impossible. Never say no. Yes, that's fantastic. Never give up. But reality is, if you can't sing and you want to be a singer, you're not going to get anywhere. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. hearing truth, understanding the facts, and then sort of adapting as and when that happens. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally, totally, totally. Wow. Ev everyone wants to be a singer. Everyone wants to have their own clothing brand. Fantastic. It's all about an entrepreneurial motion of failing and succeeding and it doesn't work out. Reality is that you are going to fail. I fail most of the time. I'm no different. Apart from this, what I'm doing now, I can uh -huh. see the finish line. I can see the talk show. I'm in motion towards the talk show as before. If I wanted to do stand up or acting, it wasn't completely in alignment with what I wanted. Yeah, I'd have a name and I could say I want to have a talk show, but it's still, where's the proof? Like, can you speak to random people? So, yeah, I might act <laughs> and do stand up once I've made it, but that isn't enough to get the talk show doing that. So I had to realize, okay, maybe I've got to forget the acting mm -hmm. and the singing or whatever and narrow myself down to this. So I'm on track. Yeah. Yeah, wow, that was, that was, um, <laughs> that was something, that was something. <laughs> you know, I haven't, yeah, I haven't really thought about it that way, actually. But I guess, I guess I'm going to see, huh? I'm going to see if, if I make it or not. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I find a lot of people, it's more the motion and the process of having something to do that's more important than actually getting to the end of the path. Like it's about like you put yourself in debt purposely so you can go to work and, um, and get out of debt because uh, the work involves social life and going for coffee with your mate afterwards, that becomes your life. So it's not about <laughs> like working. It becomes about the other factors <clears throat> like a dog. Will, I said as well, a dog will purposely bury its bone so it can have fun trying to find it and dig it up, you know? <clears throat> yeah. So basically, like, just, you know, remove the emotion, think about it logically, and, uh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, work yeah, from there, work from there. there. Like, yeah. I'm watching um, Shooter at the moment on Netflix, and he says, uh -huh, yeah. a mission based on emotion is a mission failed. True. Because yeah, you're not taking that, the business true, out of true. it, which is this guy needs to die. He's a threat to the organization. If you've had a fucking... If you've had an affair with that guy, you're not connected emotionally. You can't kill a guy you've had sex with. So now you fucked it. Mission's failed. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay, I've done enough talking. Uh, you should talk now. Oh, man, I'm, I'm actually good. Man. I'm, I'm good. I have a lot to think about. You know, you, you, gave, you gave way more value <laughs> than, than what I was able to contribute. Hmm. 
Is the sun going to get hotter? <laughs> well, I, I don't know about you there, but here, definitely it will. I mean, our well, Philippines is a tropical country here. It's either so hot or so cold, you know, from the rain. I don't know. I don't know. I guess that's the usual, you know, BS answer <laughs> I can give. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what I meant was, is the sun going to get hot? I'm not, is the uh, part of the earth going to get... Oh, is the sun going to get hot? Is the hot? sun going to suddenly, oh, like, man. increase in its temperature? <laughs> like, I don't know, for whatever reason it does or will. I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't think so. I think... I think our planet is just gonna, you know, the it's it's just gonna degrade. It's downhill from here, you know. That I, I yeah. yeah. <laughs> Either way, it, it's true. Um, whether it is, uh, yeah, it, it's it's. You're right. Once you create too much of something, it only starts to backfire. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Mars, Mars. What do you think about that? Um, well, <laughs> I was speaking to someone the other day about if if man has already done this all before, as in spaceships were just their version of planes, and uh-huh, yeah, yeah. they lifted rocks with like their mind. We have tractors, and we want to go to space. And is there aliens in space? If, for example, have we done this same cycle again? Is it the same cycle repeating, which means we're not the smartest we've ever been in terms of humans because it's just this cycle over the years that we get too smart, we go to Mars, we wipe ourselves out, global warming happens, blah, 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 blah. And we send send someone, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, then where we are now (laughs) becomes flooded, the ancient cities underwater. This is equivalent to, you know, like the Philippines, hurricane, whatever. That becomes flooded. That becomes underwater like the ancient cities underwater. And then the part that was ocean is now land. So now we build on the land and it just becomes this like cycle of imbalance. Um, And then like, you know, we moved to Mars and then um, Mars dries out. So yeah, we're like, we're trying to go to Mars. Was there life on Mars? Well, apparently there was. Again, years and years and years and years and years ago, humans could have done this same thing. Built a rocket, built a spaceship, same thing. Gone to Mars and then um, tried to live up there. Hence why there was life. And then yeah. maybe it was too cold in the end, and then they died. And then, and then, <laughs> and then humans died on the planet. And then it's like the same cycle. Next generation of humans, they go, "Let's go to Mars." And then, oh, there's life. <laughs> What's this KFC chicken wing? I don't know. They must have been here. Like, um, yeah. And it's just the same, same, same shit. Different again. generation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like I haven't really ever thought about that. But after these conversations with people, I'm starting to conclude that. Maybe we aren't the smartest we've ever been. If you look at where we're going and what we think's happened and you go back in time and they find like computers and cities underwater and then they find like, you know, tools and stuff. It's like, wow, maybe we aren't the smartest we've ever been. And it's just the cycle repeats itself. Like fires it's like burn a trees inevitable. and new trees burn. Yeah. Well, that's me. That's me. What's I don't you? know about you. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I've said my bit. I don't know about you if you have something else in mind. That I just, I just let podcasts come naturally to an end. Uh huh. I either speak too much and I get tired, or we feel like our purpose in terms of um, each human being, like <laughs> yeah, you oh, had yeah. you. You had like a purpose to come here. You learned something and I learned something or didn't or you didn't. But you 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 like kind of have an itch and you scratch it and you feel good. It's like you need to have a wank to go to bed. You have a wank and you sleep peacefully. Just you feel zen. You feel good. You know, you can just close your eyes and relax. Um, if you feel like you scratched your itch, then uh, that's when I'd normally end the podcast. Um yeah, so I mean, I have a lot to think about. You had a lot of input and yeah, it 
it seems like I have a lot of stuff to think about. Career, uh, where to go from here. Yeah, that's definitely on my my to do list now. So I'm not sure. You, could, you you go back <laughs> and lay in your bed and meditate and just reflect <laughs> yeah. on what I've said and yeah. think, wow, he was right, or wow, oh my god. Do I really want to be a singer? <laughs> Do I really want to exactly, get up at 6 a.m. Exactly. and sign fucking books? A million of them. Oh shit, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna think about this tonight. <laughs> oh, it's it's uh it's just like uh it's night here. Is there quickly anything oh. you wanna plug? Any social medias, any websites, any uh podcast platforms you wanna plug? Well, I'm not sure anymore, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if I want to plug my music. <laughs> oh, cost the rim is over now. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, this guy was right. <laughs> so, well, I guess uh, I have my YouTube search Giandakai and spell it. Spell that. Yeah, it's uh, G I A N D A K A Y, and you can search me on Spotify, YouTube, and Facebook. That's all me. You know, I'm not. I'm not sure there's anyone. Who has another name like me? That's that's my uniqueness right there. So basically, that's that's me. That's that. That's that. Any social media, Instagram or anything? Uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. It's at Giandakai and well, yeah. That. yeah, that's that's basically it. And that is amazing. Keep... That is okay. amazing, Oliver. Yeah, but, thanks okay. so much. Thanks so oh, much. I'm going to press stop recording and then we'll just say goodbye at the end, yeah? Yep.